Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the Acer Chromebook Tab 10. And it's the first Chrome OS tablet to ship as a tablet alone, no keyboard. Now, I'm using it with a Bluetooth keyboard, and I'll show you why in a moment. But in previous videos, I've shown you how you can switch to the developer channel to run Chrome OS 69 or later and install Linux applications that run, in some ways, almost as if they were native Chrome OS applications or Android applications. It's a little bit early and a little bit buggy as of the time I'm shooting this video in July of 2018, so I'm not sure I would recommend that for everybody, but it does increase the number of applications that are available to run on this Chrome OS device. In another video, I showed you that you can switch to developer mode. Now, developer mode is a little bit different from developer channel. It's not just that you get to run buggy software uh, for bleeding edge features. It allows you to have access to certain tools and settings and files that wouldn't otherwise be accessible. And one of the things you can do in developer mode is open a terminal. I'm gonna show you, you press Control, Alt, T, if you have a connected keyboard like I do. And that brings up a terminal window here that looks a little bit like a, uh, a Linux type uh, or Unix shell. So this is the uh, the shell and you can go uh, online and find instructions for something called Crouton, which allows you to install Ubuntu or other Linux based operating systems. So you can run a full fledged Linux desktop environment in addition or sort of side by side with Chrome OS. I've already done that uh, and you can find a link to this in the description of this video or at lilliputing.com. And once you've done that, you can, let just make sure I'm in the right window here. You can go into the shell and start it with a quick command. So in this case, I'm gonna start the XFC uh, desktop environment by saying sudo start XFCE4. Actually, I'm gonna type shell first and then I'm gonna type sudo start XFCE4. And then that's gonna bring up this Linux desktop environment. I already had a couple of applications open, so they're running. Now you can see it's running here in portrait mode by default. This is sort of one of the quirks. Uh, so first I'm gonna show you what works and then I'll show you a little bit of what doesn't work. Uh, what does work out of the box pretty nicely is you can see that as I move uh, the pen, there's a cursor that's actually moving on the screen and it allows me to select, scroll, and uh, move things around and so forth. I can go up into the applications menu here and say I want to open LibreOffice Writer. Okay, I missed Writer and instead I went up with a spreadsheet. And this is actually a pretty good one to show that everything is really tiny. So that's one of the first things that I noticed here is A, it defaults to portrait mode and B, it defaults to the, the stock resolution, which is 2048 by 1536. So you kind of have to squint to see anything. Now you can zoom, which might make things a little bit easier, but some of these menus and other things are still pretty tiny. Uh, let me see if I can get writer to open. So I'm zoomed in at about 200% here, but if I went down to 100%, everything would look pretty tiny again. So uh, overall though, it works pretty well. It looks like a typical desktop style environment. And some of these things run a little bit more easily and allow you to have sort of access to the free form uh, window mode here. Because things, because the menus and uh, icons and other things are so tiny, it can be hard to tap exactly what you're trying to touch even when you're using a stylus. So things like resizing or moving or whatever can be a little bit difficult as can text input or navigating these menus. Um, so why am I stuck at this resolution? Well, I'll show you. Uh, actually, the first thing I wanna show you is um, since I'm using this Logitech keyboard here that's not really designed for Chrome OS, it's designed for Android devices or Windows devices, uh, you know, those sorts of things. Normally what I would do to switch from this view back to Chrome OS is Control, Shift, Alt, and forward or back, but I don't have forward or back buttons. So I tried the arrow buttons, nothing. I tried the multimedia buttons, nothing. I've got sort of backspace and delete buttons, nothing. Uh, so I'm basically stuck here. The only way to get out of this would be to go 
into the log out option and logging out will just dump us right back to uh, Chrome OS. But you wanna make sure that you save any files you're working on before doing that. Next thing I'm gonna show you though is if we go to settings and display, here you see that we do have access to a menu that should let you change the resolution but it doesn't. <laughs> Tapping that just doesn't bring up any other options. So I can't reduce the resolution. Now, if I wanted to, I could switch to portrait orientation, but doing so, clicking apply, is a little bit problematic because now everything looks a little bit more like a typical desktop environment, but the mouse cursor doesn't move the way I expect it to. When I move up and down, it moves left and right. And that can make it kind of tough to do things like figure out where the cursor is. So if I wanted to go back up to the applications menu and log out, I'd have to go okay, all the way up and then that way and then up a little bit more. And now I'm off the screen. So let's go a little to the left. So you can see how difficult and sort of confusing that can be. So, um, Trying to switch back orientation can be an exercise in frustration too. I'm gonna to go to none and apply. Whew. Wasn't sure I'd be able to do that so quickly. So as I mentioned, in order to exit this mode, you just go to log out. And when that's done, It'll take you right back to Chrome OS. So it's uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, it's something I wouldn't necessarily recommend trying without a keyboard. I'm not even sure that you could do it without a keyboard because you do need to hit a couple of uh, special key combinations. But once you do enable uh, use Crouton to enable a full-fledged desktop environment, it makes this device a little bit more capable. So you can find more details about general performance of the Acer Chromebook Tab 10 at lilyputing.com or checking out my YouTube channel for more videos about this device. And you can find uh, what Linux applications running developer channel as opposed to developer mode uh, looks like, and that's allowing them to run within this user interface uh, or one that's very similar to it. So that is Crouton to uh, run Linux side by side in a uh, CH root or a shroot, or I'm not entirely sure how to spell uh, pronounce it because I normally just see it written uh, mode using the same sort of underlying Linux kernel and having access to some of the same resources as the Chrome operating system, but getting a full-fledged desktop environment as opposed to this view, which is really designed to run things full screen or split screen, but not having a windowed resizable mode. A uh, little bit buggy, a little bit sort of uh, not perfect for tablets out of the box because of the screen resolution and the lack of landscape orientation. But uh, if you wanted to play around with it, all you'd need to do is enable, enable developer mode first. And then you can find instructions on how to do that at lilliputing.com or on my YouTube channel. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing and another look at the Acer Chromebook Tab 10, uh, something that you can do as more of an advanced user uh, set of tools. Keep in mind, uh, I should probably always make this disclaimer that if you do switch to developer mode as opposed to developer channel, uh, you're going to wind up erasing all of the data on the device and have to re-log in with your, uh, your account information. So make sure to back things up first and it's never a bad idea to create a restore disk first.